right now we've got an amazing panel coming up well a uh, digital workplace in the covid uh, world among many terms the term workplace and office have been redefined through accelerated processes like the cloud migration concepts such as cloud first and cloud only approach have now become the mainstay while remote working is the new normal well to touch upon the topic enabling digital workplace with cloud and looking at sub topics like create and deploy powerful virtual agents develop our business intelligence with our data warehouse build a preventive framework to reduce and mitigate the likelihood of business disruption deliver business transformation through mobile and cloud native apps implement the most effective cloud workplace tools considering the availability of critical cloud infrastructure leveraging workplace technology as well as defining policies around remote work we've got these amazing panelists joining us well first up we've got Saiful uh, Bakhtiar Osman the head of ICT Malaysian Aviation Commission joining us well Saiful's been ranked as one of the top 50 CIOs for ASEAN in 2019 by the International Data Group and he brings with him a solid 20 years of experience in diverse industries such as fund management, oil and gas, financial institutions and regulatory body. He currently serves as the head of ICT, as I said, for the Malaysian Asian Commission, the Econo which is the economic regulator for the aviation industry. We're also joined by uh, Winnie uh, Thalosig Ribankos, uh, the CIO of Coca-Cola Beverages. Well, Winnie is responsible for leveraging IT uh, talent and growing capabilities that deliver the next generation of solutions with a focus on customer-centric experience and digitizing the operations. We're also joined by Francis uh, Wiernes, the Associate Director, Head of Data Analytics, Alicia, who will be joining, uh, who's joined us. Uh, well, uh, Francis has graduated top two in of the masters in the finance in 2018 and cum laude in uh, economics. Uh, Francis has a vast experience in the financial and data industry and he was recognized global data science author towards data science publication. He's also uh, into academia when he teaches finance and economics uh, subjects in three big four, uh, four schools in Manila. We're also joined by Stephen Wong uh, Weng Leong, the Chief Operating and Financial Strategist of the China Construction Bank. Well, uh, Stephen, having held uh, several senior executive leadership positions across a number of leading financial institutions over the last 26 years, Mr. Wong uh, drives bank-wide business development information technology, operations, finance, and digital bank strategies to accelerate business and transformation growth, including uh, catalyzing fintech initiatives and delivering product, technology, and digital innovations. And this entire panel discussion, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be moderated by Renaldo Luktu, uh, the CEO of Hungry Workhouse. Well, Ray Luktu is the CEO of the Hungry Workhouse, which is a digital and cultural transformation consulting firm. He's a fellow of the US-based uh, Institute of Digital Transformation and the country representative of the Institute of Change and Transformation Professionals Asia. He's also the chairman, ladies and gentlemen, of the ICT committee and the subcommittee chairman of Media, Affair Comite uh, Media Affairs Committee of uh, Finex and the vice chairman of the ICT committee of the Management Association of the Philippines. So thank you so much to our incredible uh, panelists for joining us today and giving us your valuable time. And with this, I may pass it to Ray, who is going to be moderating it and taking it forward with his panel. Over to you. Thank you, Bhavana. Right, this is an interesting topic. No? It's enabling digital workplace with cloud. We have a powerful uh, cast of uh, panelists no? coming from different industries and with regional experience and global experience. Let's start with the first basic question. So, how is the adoption of uh, workplace cloud in your industries uh, and your companies? Let's start with uh, Saiful. Now you're in the aviation and have been in the several industries. Uh, thank you. Okay, for the adoption for uh, the cloud and also the technology workspace is quite uh, 
heavily in uh, aviation sector. As for ourselves, we are the academic regulator. As a regulator also, uh, currently we are about uh, 90%, 90% on cloud. So basically, uh, the adaptation uh, is since the inception of our information in 2016. So our, our core system is currently on cloud. Mm. Uh, leveraging on uh, Salesforce Cloud and also for the uh, work, uh, work, workspace uh, technology, we are leveraging on Office 365. So in, in terms of aviation as a whole, uh, we can notice that uh, most of our airlines and also airports also uh, engage, engage in this uh, cloud. Uh, for instance, uh, like in uh, back home in Malaysia, we have KSR. Yeah? Uh, highly, highly uh, utilizing the IoT, which also the IoT is uh, running on cloud. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, the good thing about this IoT is that uh, they have this all the sensors, the sensors fit to the plane. So whatever is the problem uh, in the air, so all the sensors will, will uh, return all the errors to the ground. So by the time uh, the the aeroplane reached to the next destination, all the ground code is ready uh, for and also the maintenance to fix mm -hmm. the before they can uh, resume the flight. So this is all of the good things about cloud cloud adoption. As for ourselves, in terms of uh, uh, cloud adoption, the most the most uh, uh, the most effective one is we can see that. Even in this time of NCO, so where most of the people are working from home. So in terms of services to the people, we are not affected at all. Because uh, for mostly we are handling complaints, complaints from our customers who are not satisfied or do not receive a satisfactory resolution from, from uh, aviation uh, 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 airport services or airlines. So they will come to us to complain. So don't and file complain. So they were they were able to do this uh, via a few channels. The first thing is our uh, mobile app. They can find the complaint so they can go to our website. Website we have uh, the uh, website form available, or they can even call our uh, customer hotline to file the complaint. Mm, okay. Yeah, thank you, Saiful. And that's uh, you know quite uh, an impressive adoption in the aviation. Uh, Weenie, let's move to you. you know. So uh, you're in FMCG and uh, your company employs uh, you know thousands of uh, employees. So how's the adoption of uh, you know work uh, work uh, place management in your company and in your industry in general? Hi, Ray. Good morning, everyone. I think um, it's funny that in the in Coca Cola. We started cloud, cloud adoption mainly because of business continuity. And mm -hmm. because you are Filipino, you would know that the Philippines would be faced with several calamities. First, mm -hmm. there would be typhoons. Um, and just recently, we've had some, so many of them. I think the, the main cloud, cloud adoption um, initiative that we did is because of uh, Fault Line, where our data center was. And then that paved the way for us to think about business continuity and how do we make sure that even this thing, this calamity happen in the in the area of Philippines, at least we are uh, we are backed up. When the pandemic came, because we already have put everything in the cloud, when the pandemic came, it just became so natural for our employees to be digitally available and dispersed without any issues. So mm -hmm. everyone was working on day one when the government um, initially announced that, that there's going to be a lockdown. On day one, and in just a matter of like hours, we were able to get everyone in the company first and not worry about uh, security, not, wor not worry about them being not being able to access all our applications. Mm -hmm. So the cloud option has been pushed us by natural calamities, including the pandemic, including the, the situations or the geography that we are in. Mm, interesting, we need so yeah, wide adoption as well. No, so there's there was a meme that uh, 
uh, ask the question, who drove, who led your digital transformation? Is it the CEO, is it the CEO, or is it COVID? <laughs> so there's a truth oh, in yeah, that. COVID and the typhoons and the earthquake. <laughs> yes. yes, so yes, especially in the Philippines, no? we are, yes. uh, you know, calamity stricken. Francis, no, in uh, real estate, no, real estate is, uh, uh, you know, uh, in many reports, it's badly hit because of the pandemic. You know, how are you uh, coping and how is cloud helping you uh, in your work, uh, please? Great. Uh, thank you for that, Craig. That's actually a very uh, relevant question right now. Um, real estate has always been viewed as one of the few industries to migrate last because, well, it's really dealing with tangible like uh, tangible products. And, um, well, for real estate, if you could, uh, well, one of the key factors there in order for you to buy is that you need to see the place. So it's it, it, there's really an air of personal relationships when you are dealing with real estate. Um, but uh, to add for uh, for how we're dealing with that, uh, uh, we also echo the um, we're concern of Winnie because in the Philippines, we're also in the Philippines where there's a lot of typhoon and actually we've just experienced one right now, right? So um, it, it, this is actually not just a question for us, even for the schools. So the schools are also uh, announcing the, uh, um, what you call uh, suspensions despite the fact that they are not moving already, right? So uh, one, one aspect was business continuity where, of course, if something happens to a particular place because we all know that internet connections are not really as equal, um, then uh, we need to be able to carry on work. But in terms of the other, for the most relevant one, it's also about uh, carrying on not just business continuity but also just continuing uh, work uh, at, as normal so in the new normal so one is for research for example so we're gonna have to find a way to validate the data without us just sending uh, let's say uh, excel or throughout and uh, the third one is we say for you if you're a broker um you're gonna have to find a way to make sales so right now the 3d virtual um what you call this a uh, showrooms are already being implemented and the vr technologies have increased so much that right now, actually, just a span of two quarters, we can actually see more sales or the real estate actually, uh, uh, well, being awakened again because of this uh, adoption. So those are the key trends that I see in real estate. Mm, all right. Okay. Thank you, Francis. Stephen, in your industry, you know, highly regulated, uh, you know, what can we learn from uh, you know, your company uh, in terms of uh, cloud adoption? Specifically and uh, you know generally, you know what's the cloud adoption in your sector? Thank you, Ray. Um, I guess uh, you have frankly put it that the banking and financial services sector is the most regulated and most stringent in terms of any type of uh, you know uh, cloud implementation. Uh, likewise, you know um, I'm based in Malaysia. Um, there's still a lot of uh, what they call that a lot of growth. You know, a lot of opportunities for cloud implementation mm. so i look at it um uh three things you know i'm actually an advocate of cloud all right uh three factors or three drivers that would eventually you know uh, where all the financial institutions of the world will start to adopt all right uh, i mean abide that you know we are very uh what they call that constraint within that that regulatory framework Mm -hmm. What are things that the banks should be looking at or financial services in, uh, sector players should be looking at? Number one is, I think what Leo mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of economics. And economics mm -hmm. is very, very important because you look at the whole IT infrastructure itself, all right, uh, the cost effectiveness. Uh, you know, if you, if you uh, deploy a cloud and you, 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 you basically, you know, uh, utilize a cloud, the, the cost effectiveness is, you know, is so much more uh, uh, viable then compared to uh, what they call that a uh, conventional uh, infrastructure, so capex wise, capex wise itself, you know, for a bank, it makes it makes uh, it makes what they call that uh, mm -hmm. justifiable. All right, if you look at the long run, okay, mm -hmm. today you look at you know uh, being nimble as compared mm -hmm. to all the new fintech players uh, coming into the industry, the banks must start to be more agile. All right. So number one, you know, uh, in terms of cost effectiveness, in terms of economics, I would like to echo what uh, Leo mentioned earlier. Second point that I would like to uh, stress on is why the banking and financial services sector, you know, uh, needs to be more uh, more adaptable to cloud is be is because of the reliability. All right, if you look at the uh, basically the the platform itself today, uh, 
you know, at the initial stage, you know, the question is always, you know, whether cloud is it secure, right? Mm. You, as you come along, you know, the the the, the cycle or the uh, what they call it, the journey, you find that you know, uh, security is no longer an issue. All right, in fact, you know, it is it's the least concern, and uh, you know, it has become so reliable and so uh, so effective for any uh, players, you know, any sectors to actually jump on board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second point I would like to bring to the table. Third point I would like to bring to the table is in terms of the uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. okay. The flexibility of cloud, if you look at it today, you know, uh, the speed and the agility of processing, all right, on a cloud is basically so much faster, so much uh, efficient, you know, so much effective, all right. And this also drives you really look at it, it drives the customer service, the customer experience. So there are a lot of, you know, a whole, a whole list of uh, benefits and opportunities, you know. Um, you know, I just outlined the three points here, all right. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to basically, you know, uh, debate about it, you know, but exciting times are ahead, actually. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. So uh, economics, right, reliability and flexibility. Now, uh, you know, uh, Winnie and Francis spoke about business continuity as a driver. But let's uh, talk about in the context of the workforce. No? What uh, tools? No? What tools uh, uh, were immediately adopted no? and uh, you know implemented across your industries and organizations when COVID uh, struck us? No? Uh, Saiful, no? in aviation, what kind of tools no? were uh, immediately uh, you know adopted and implemented? Okay, basically. Uh... In terms of uh, aviation industry, mostly uh, we are highly dependent on the uh, office of supply. Uh, mm. Even in the uh, Malaysian Ministry of Transport, we, in this, this time of pandemic, we really highly utilize Microsoft Teams ah. uh, to continue our meeting, uh, communication. So basically, uh, this uh, workplace in uh, which the cloud is very, very uh, effective. And so reliable in this time of pandemic because uh, we, need, uh, we still need to uh, continue our services, we still need to deliver. Like, um, even uh, our staff, uh, if I could share, like our uh, call center. If our call center, uh, before this initially, we have the, the traditional PABI system. So, whenever a uh, customer calls to complain, then uh, we need to go through. Uh, the uh, PHI system in the office. But mm -hmm. what will happen if uh, the building is, is not accessible? So that has been taken into uh, con consideration when we start to moving our hotline, uh, customer hotline to cloud. So currently, our 1-800 numbers is running on the uh, private PBS cloud. So mm -hmm. as long as there is uh, internet connection, then our call center executive can handle the complaint, can we still uh, entertain all the complaints for customers without mm -hmm. any problem. So we still able to deliver our function as a regulator, then this really helps. It is of reliability, it's accessible 24 by 7, and also in terms of uh, the customer reaching out to us, accessible uh, anyway, as long as there's uh, internet connection. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Saiful. You mentioned collaboration tools like Teams and uh, customer service, you no, know, uh, like in call centers. Yes, Winnie, yes. Uh, in your in Coca Cola, you no. Know, so you have uh, again you know, thousands of employees on you know, different, uh, uh, you know, geographic areas and different departments. You know, what kind of uh, you know uh, workplace tools did you uh, immediately uh, adopt and implemented? Uh, Winnie, uh, mute. Okay, so probably mentioned top three, Ray. So number one, we had to make sure that everyone is going to be protected. So we ensured that global cloud service implemented, which um, also ensured that everyone would be able to access SAP anywhere, anytime that they need to. So it was um, it was actually a very promising adoption because everyone else thought that at SAP could just be accessed via VPNs or via internal network. But when we 
uh, gave them GPTS, everyone was able to do that. Second, mm -hmm. in terms of collabor collaboration, I agree with Saipo. They are also a Microsoft company, and we have engaged with, um, we have a very good uh, relationship with Microsoft. So there was the productivity tools that we have with them, the team. Yammer, anything that could engage everyone in the workforce. We are even um, doing some engagement and well being over teams. So, a lot of those happening. Aside from that, we also ensure that OneDrive over Azure is, um, is also Wednesday because, mm. as you know, there is much needed uh, interface with our pre sellers who are our feet on the ground and our management who makes sure that the business is uh, there is continuity to business. And then, lastly, from a technology perspective, we had to continue what we were doing, and that is uh, systems development. So, we had to put it low platform um, base that are also cloud-based to ensure mm -hmm. that even our developers are working everyone will have the productivity as if they are working um, in the office and this local to ensures that while everyone is dispersed uh, we still meet our SLAs and we still meet our targets to deliver to the customers. Mm -hmm also allows us to be agile and uh, speedy to the requirements of our customers who are actually practically nationwide. So these are our wholesalers. Mm, yeah, that's quite comprehensive, uh, Winnie. No. Francis, no, I imagine you have a lot of, uh, you know, field uh, sales no? uh, as well. Uh, you know, so what, what kind of tools no, uh, were immediately adopted in your company? Okay, so with regards to the same, well, I agree with Typhoon and Winnie that uh, the most used right now is actually the uh, communication platforms. Uh, aside from Teams, you also sometimes use uh, Zoom. Um, uh, when it comes to uh, the work, yeah, so we've uh, currently adopted other types of, um, yeah, like I think there are new uh, software that can allow you to build. So we've adopted them, but uh, I don't even know the exact name. But when it comes to research and, uh, let's say, uh, well, what we're currently doing, the data analytics, we've actually utilized uh, Amazon services because, well, they're very cheap. And when you are dispersed and you want to work with that, well, as our developers, uh, they're now, well, we don't know the strength of their connection or their web connectivity. Uh, connecting to something like, let's say, uh, Google, uh, well, using the, the notebook there and um, Amazon allows you to borrow some of the computing power. So actually, this is really one great use that we've, we've found out in, in the cloud. Whereas if you do the computations or the calculations of your algorithms in your local PC, they're very, very prone to, uh, to, well, to crashing because of low power. And also, you might not save it. So if we do everything on the cloud as a collaboration, so that's actually working uh, well for us. Of course, we have to pay, but uh, the cost is actually much, much uh, uh, lower than if you have done and lost the work mm -hmm. in this one. We also uh, have like uh, collaborated and created packages that is uh, solely for us. So we have, we have utilized GitHub more. And uh, that's actually something that we're, we didn't know uh, or you're planning to do, but this pandemic has uh, sped the adoption. And uh, lastly, in terms of risk management in the workplace, uh, our HR is looking into, and we're actually in talk with some of those who are developing, or actually we can develop it internally, uh, what you call the employee mapping, wherein you scatter, you create a scatter plot of your uh, employees and try to see which uh, which ones cluster into what city so that if in the event something happens, you know who to contact aside from your uh, organizational uh, chart uh, or, or how they're placed. So that's something that we're also looking out of the program. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Francis. So risk management and employee mapping. No? This is a good segue to our next question. I will ask you, Stephen, uh, again, uh, in a highly regulated industry, uh, what sort of policies no, are uh, you know, set up around remote work? No? Uh, and do you still maintain uh, and operate uh, physical branches right now? Okay. Thank you, Ray. Uh, let me zoom. Uh, okay. There are a couple of angles to look at the questions that you have posed. All right. First, let me answer uh, in terms of uh, the policies. All right. If you, let me zoom out. You look at the, the zoom out. Look at the macro level within the region. 
uh, today, uh, you look at the policies of the regulators within the banking sector itself. Uh, I would say today, uh, the regulators are, are in a more advanced uh, uh, stage of you know of implementing cloud. Would be countries like Hong, Hong Kong, which is part of China, uh, because they're the financial center, Singapore and Thailand. Whereas the other, the other countries, the regulators are also you know uh, pushing for cloud. But then, you know, they are more careful, you know, but eventually I would say that all regulators will, 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 will come on board and then, you know, uh, we'll actually end this cloud. So that is in terms of policies. All right. Second question in terms of to, to answer your uh, the question on branches and so on. All right. Uh, I mean, branches is, is actually, uh, I look at it as a hybrid. All right. It's a complement between, you know, the digital world or the virtual world. All right. You still have branches where, you know, uh, where in, in a lot of countries within this region, you find that there are segments that you need to have branches, all right? Uh, why am I saying that? Because customer segment like the underserved or the unserved, all right, you need to have a physical presence. And that is very crucial in terms of reaching to the, to the population, you know, which are more towards the rural area and, mm -hmm. and uh, so on. So it is also, you know, I mean, I, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no yes or no answer to this. So I guess if you look at it uh, at, at, as a holistic um, what you call it framework, it has to be addressed, uh, you know, uh, in I mean, more comprehensive, uh, more holistically, and you know, uh, it covers all types of uh, of uh, segments. Mm, uh, thank you, Stephen. So I picked up a uh, hybrid operations right now. Saiful, uh, you know, you have uh, you had uh, you know extensive experience in other industries. You know, when we speak about cloud, uh, you know, there's always talk about hybrid, no cloud. No? There's a physical, uh, you know, uh, on premise, and there's a cloud component. You know what? Uh, you know what is the picture now? No? Uh, is it more cloud uh, when you talk about hybrid? Hybrid. So is the physical presence, you know, significantly reduced uh, during this time? Okay. So, uh, basically, yes. Uh, exactly as you said. Uh, nowadays we have uh, a lot of choices when it comes to cloud. So basically, for organization, they have to really choose the best and the right the right fit for their organization. The, uh, the decision whether to have it uh, totally on cloud or to have a hybrid uh, uh, a mixture of on site and also uh, cloud it depends on your. The, of course, the first one is the policy of your company. The second one is uh, your uh, the, the direction the direction of the business. Mm. Then, uh, if you want to go all out to the cloud, yes, we have so many uh, services nowadays that are provided by the cloud. We have the software as a service, we have the hardware as a service. So it really depends on the the uh, on the uh, the risk that they are taking. So the direction of the business and also uh, uh, the expenditure, how much they are willing to spend. So they have to really know the right fit for the organization because uh, no point if you spend so much by having everything in the cloud, but the utilization is very low. So it's, uh, it's going to be a uh, double-edged sword. So mm. if you are spending too much for cloud, but uh, have a low, very, very low utilization. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they say it will be answerable. So, uh -huh. uh, it's pretty good. So, uh, the, 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 the important thing is to have the right fit for your organization. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Winnie, how about in your organization? So, uh, is it more mainly cloud now? Or have you uh, totally eradicated the physical? Uh, on-site infrastructure? No, we are not really. It's still hybrid, Ray. I think there is still a need for us. Um, in, in specifically, our infrastructure is not that good when it comes to internet. No? Uh -huh. So we still have sites in Cebu. We still have uh, sites in other locations that cater to these needs. But majority, I would say that we are already 70% on cloud. Um, making sure that majority of our applications not just reside in our perimeter, but also in other uh, providers. And that is to also ensure that there is going to be business continuity. Ah, okay. That's great practice. Now, 
Francis, no, uh, we need mention about our challenge in uh, internet infrastructure. No, uh, in your case, no, because you have field uh, sales. No, how? Uh, you know, what kind of uh, applications, mobile applications that use the internet? No? Uh, do you use and do you encounter this challenge no, of internet infrastructure? No? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, actually, uh, we, we do experience uh, some some problem with that, but but you know, wide scale. Um, so we're still hybrid, so, and uh, a lot of our deals are still happening in the office because uh, even though there's pandemic, um, mm -hmm. if you have real business, uh, well, real estate, you really would want to meet people, right? So there's still people going into the office, and they're more than just a skeletal workforce. Uh, but in terms of the mobile, we actually uh, use just the, uh, well, for, for reporting, uh, because you can report on printed paper right now or your analysis dispersed. Um, so we create online app for dashboards, for example. So uh, Microsoft Power BI, that is the easiest one to, to utilize. So uh, that one we show to our clients and uh, they're easily, uh, they're interactive now. Um, and uh, I guess, well, that on top of the other uh, uh social uh, media app so that's it that's it okay so dashboards no and business intelligence uh so our last points no so uh, we'll ask you uh panelists uh, the last question what is your prospect uh steven uh when it comes to uh, you know to a uh, cloud adoption uh you know technologies you know, and applications what's going to be the prospect in the near future you no know, post covid no? will the world be more cloud uh, you know, will uh, you know uh, industries be more open, Stephen? Okay, that's that's a good question. All right, I would like to answer this question. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, based on the context again of the banking and financial services industry. All right, um, where a lot of regulators today, even though they are very uh, receptive, very open to the idea of cloud, but then the 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 basically. It's still within the constraint parameter of the data all right must be sitting locally in country all right uh whatever it is you know uh it is still the financial uh the financial transactions and the uh, and the information all this you know it cannot basically uh uh it has to stay within the country so i so i look at it uh uh as i mentioned earlier in 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 what i mentioned earlier the opportunities is is a plenty we should mm -hmm. be looking at it, you know, a gradual migration of, of, of data into cloud, all right? It's not one, you know, it's just not one lock, stock, and barrel, and then everything put on cloud. It's yeah. you know, gradually start with non-sensitive inf information, all right? And I mean, for the banking industry, start with non-sensitive information. And then from there, gradually, you know, as you uh, embrace the security, you know, as you can see now, the security, why the cloud is so much more secure. So... Once that 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 uh, that journey has matured, then you find that you know the cloud will be the future. All right, it will replace the 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 legacy infrastructure. It will be, uh, you know, uh, you know, we are just looking for more cloud adoption in every sector, every industry, every segment. All right. That's okay. So more yeah. cloud adoption, uh, Saiful. Your short uh, prospect of the future. Uh, what can I say in terms of uh, aviation industry? Yeah? Uh, we'll see a lot more cloud coming in. So, of course, with uh, the adoption of IoTs, the cloud will be a huge, a huge uh, help for the, the adoption of uh, IoT. So, but, uh, but um, the way I see it, this uh, pandemic is really a blessing in disguise. But before, <coughs> before this, we have all the head of IT say, oh, they have difficulty to get the management approval for budget and everything. So it's like this, uh, with uh, this pandemic, everything is now clear uh, to the management. Why we, why do we, uh, they need to invest in technology? So this is the, the right time of all uh, IT people to seek uh, to improve their infrastructure, they need to engage in cloud, to improve their uh, availability, the continuity of the business, and at the same time, uh to help the uh, company to regain a uh, competitive uh, advantage in the event of disaster so that's um in uh my company it's something that the principle that we say that is something that uh, before we engage in, in terms invest in, in any system in cloud or in, in any industry uh the basic principle is something that we can break we are 
So B uh, it must uh, bring value to our stakeholders. And, okay. Uh, it, it has to be uh, the right fit for organization. So mm -hmm. A is something that uh, aligned with the business direction and strategy. And last but not least, G is something that uh, generate the work and life balance and beneficial to our staff. Okay. So that's why it's also very important. All right. Yeah. So uh, I think we have uh, we have had a great discussion here, no? and we are, uh, you know our time is uh, limited. No, but it has been fruitful, uh, fruitful discussion, everyone. No? Uh, so Cloud is here to stay, no, transforming businesses. No, and I'm happy to know that the speakers are, you know, uh, implementing and promoting cloud no? uh, in their respective industries and companies. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stephen, Saiful, Winnie. Francis, back to you, Bafana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ray, Winnie, Stephen, Francis, and Saiful. Well, it's been a very engaging conversation, and it just uh, uh, went on with such an expansive length of knowledge coming from all of you. And what a great way to have uh, such an incredible panel joining us on the World Cloud Show. So once again, on behalf of Trescon, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.